I'm Arya Schwartz, and welcome to the Windsider Show, where it's all about the W. The semifinals started off with a bang. The Sun and Liberty are tied at one apiece, and the Aces are one game away from being back in the WNBA Finals with a 2-0 lead over the Dallas Wings. I got a special guest today, so let's dive right in and discuss. If you like our show, please consider joining our Patreon community, patreon.com forward slash Winsider, patreon.com forward slash Winsider. It's less than a cup of coffee a month, and you can directly show support for the hard work we do covering the W. And don't forget to see our amazing staff's written content over at Winsider.com. That's Winsider.com. And make sure you're joining us on playback for our W watch parties during these playoffs. Use the link playback.tv forward slash Winsider playback.tv forward slash Winsider. Welcome to the Winsider show. I'm excited. I was just uh, in the plug talking about some of our amazing written content. Well, we have one of those amazing written content creators, otherwise known as writers, uh, joining me today. Ace, how's it going? How have the playoffs been treating you? It's going good. Uh, The playoffs are shaking out i think exactly how i expected them to so far uh especially the semifinals yeah well we're gonna push you on that we'll see we'll see um (laughs) let's let's talk a little right (laughs) so game one the sun win pretty surprising i think for a lot of people um just to see how dominant of a win it was final score of 78 63 sun win the rebounding battle forced new york into six more turnovers but maybe most importantly, 29% from three for New York that game. And Stewie and Sabrina Inescu combined for 11 of 39 from the field, just struggling offensively to get things going. Uh, Liberty looked lost. And I'm going to steal a quote from you last night on playback. Shameless plug. You should join us. They're a lot of fun. But in game two, on the heels of the MVP announcement, the Liberty win 84-77. Tip Hayes goes off for 30. Bonner adds 19. Alyssa Thomas doing Alyssa Thomas things. Teetering on a triple-double with 10-8-9. and Um, And Becca Allen foul trouble is an interesting aspect. But the thing I'm going to steal from you, the Liberty got the dog back. The dog entered the chat. Um, at a variety of key moments, I think the the most impressive thing for me, at least about the New York Liberty this season, has been when we talk about, and I'm sorry to do this to our fans, but to compare the Liberty and the Aces, I know, faux pas, whatever. But what we've seen throughout this dynasty level run from the Aces, um, and I say that because, what, like five, six years in a row in the semifinals, they're a game away from going back to the finals. Um, we've seen that cool, calm and collectiveness and then that killer mentality, that dog when you need it. And we saw that from the Liberty last night. We saw the Liberty at times struggling offensively, looking lost, staying in the game kind of, cause that's what Connecticut allows their opponents to do. Like when Connecticut dominates a game, it's not a blowout like the Liberty or the aces or honestly Dallas. Um, it's going to be a game where there's going to be opportunity And I think the Liberty took advantage of those opportunities. Um, I have a feeling there's a player we're both thinking of. But when when you think about the dog uh, in last night's game, if if you had to give like the the dog bone, you know how the teams love to give their like whatever it is. Like if you had to give the dog bone to a Liberty player last night, who are you giving it to? I think Benajah Laney. Oh yeah. Has to be. Um, she was locked in the second half. And like you mentioned in game one, like the big eyesore for New York was the three point shooting. And that's something that you never really have to worry about with New York. Like that's something that they usually have in the bag is their ability to, to, to hit from long range. So the fact that she was hitting her shots, she was hitting contested shots. She had no hesitation. That was huge. Um, and so she was definitely like their X factor. I hate to say like a starter, is an X factor, but like, I think she's definitely flown under the radar in terms of her impact with this team on both ends of the floor. Obviously they were trying to promote her for defensive player of the year. She's an excellent defender, but she can hit those shots. Um, she has the ability to do that. She has the ability to cut. Um, but she was definitely like the big dog in terms of New York's ability to actually close it out. Um, 
yesterday night. So yeah, no, her impact was huge. And I think also Stewie a little bit with those five blocks, I would say was pretty huge for them. Stewie. I mean, I just felt bad for Olivia Nelson. (laughs) Because like a player who let's be real, right. Gets drafted, goes to LA tumultuous situation going on in LA the past few years, get traded, gets traded this off season to Connecticut. And throughout the season, like Connecticut after losing Bree Jones, that is struggled kind of finding their footing in the front court, how they're going to play, who's going to take those rotation minutes. And especially when you're going up against a team that has JJ, that has Stewie, um, they needed that length. They needed that size. Ono was, was playing great, but just you can't turn your back to Brianna Stewart and try and get it, get those shots up. She like, Oh my God, that, it that alumni disgusting. meeting is going to be awkward as hell next time they hang out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Brianna Stewart, I mean, a ridiculous game, right? A quote unquote off game for Stewie. Um, just not like, sorry, <laughs> like off game for Brianna Stewart. Let me read her stat line. Uh, while she did not shoot the greatest, right? Three of 13 from the field with just 11 points uh, to drop 11 rebounds, five assists, five blocks, two steals, and just one turnover. And honestly, low-key, those four free throws. Shooting the team shot 16 for 16 from the free throw line where Connecticut left four points at the line. Now, you hit those four free throws, and we're talking a very, very different game as we come into those final, you know, waning moments. Um, for me, I looked, you know, I always kind of, I look at, okay, this is obvious what the team that won did good. Um, what did you kind of see the shift from, because we talked about it, it was three-point shooting. Um, it was finding that dog for, for the liberty to shift it. On the opposite end, what did you see change for Connecticut? For me, I'm looking at Becca Allen's early foul trouble and what she offers to this defense, but also on offense was a very important aspect. And then Natisha Heideman throwing up on the sidelines, obviously, I don't know what the deal is there. Food poisoning, the flu, something else. Um, not a good sign <laughs> if, if you're looking for game three, but what was the, what was like the change for Connecticut in your mind? I think it had a lot to do with how the Liberty switched to zone um, in the second half, I think. Um, before that, Connecticut was really able to take advantage of the fact that New York wasn't really communicating on defense. They were doing more man-to-man coverage. Um, and as a result, you saw a lot of Beck Allen open shots. You saw a lot of Beck Allen cuts to the basket with ease. Um, Alyssa Thomas was doing an excellent job in game one specifically also of being able to sort of like set the floor for Connecticut with very little resistance from the Liberty's defense. So I think that in game two, I don't know if it was necessarily anything that Connecticut was doing wrong. I think it was just that they were getting shown a much different look from New York's defense that they just weren't able to sort of like pick apart in the same way. Um, but again, like you said, I think that had a lot to do with Beck Allen getting into foul trouble so early. Um, she was prior to that doing such an excellent job on those like dribble handoffs. Um, she was kind of like the dark horse on the floor for Connecticut on offense because so much of the attention was put on AT, put on Dewana Bonner. And as a result, Beck Allen was just left wide open or she was just sneaking around on the court and able to kind of like get what she wanted at will. So I think that was just huge for them. Like, I can't, I don't know, Connecticut to me, like they didn't do anything wrong. (laughs) If that makes sense. Like it was just more that New York was able to sort of like piece themselves together better on defense when it mattered in the second half. I don't anticipate Connecticut making that same mistake come game three and beyond. Um, But I think it was really just a matter of the Liberty finally figuring out what they were missing on defense. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I know I already kind of mentioned this, maybe I'm beating a dead horse, but it feels like very much to me when you take out Natisha Heideman and when you take out uh, Rebecca Allen, not in the sense like take them out, but like when they're not part of the equation, that ser- like to beat a Vegas, to beat a New York, they have such elite three-point shooting that 
and the pace and just like the speed of their offense to compete, to compete with these teams, you need three point shooting. Three points are worth more than two, as people love to say. Like, but at the end of the day, if you're sitting there and you're missing Becca Allen, you're missing Natisha Heidman, two players that have played not only key roles in this series and in this playoffs, but throughout the season for this team, you're just you're starting, you know, a few steps behind in a lack of a better explanation. And then you throw in a very capable three-point shooter in Ty Harris. But this is kind of a thing that like throughout the season, players have roles. And in the playoffs, you very finely define those roles. And then you injuries happen, you're flung into something new. I saw multiple times throughout the game where Ty Harris was hesitating on fairly good looks. And when I say fairly good looks, like it's the playoffs. You're not getting, you know, the craziest open, whatever looks like people will die to defend you in the playoffs. And when not only like, cause I can see a lot of fans going, well, Ty Harris is, is a good three point shooter. If Natisha goes out or Beck Allen goes out, she should be able to step up. Yes. But the difference is the confidence in which shots you're willing to take. All those shots and Natisha, or, sorry, that Ty Harris hesitated for a split second on, you know, Becca Allen and Natisha are taking, are they going in? Maybe, maybe not, but you need to put those shots up and have the confidence to make the shots. So for me, that was kind of like, I agree with what you said in the sense of like, I don't think they did anything wrong. Like it wasn't like, Oh, they just totally collapsed on defense or, Oh, their offensive game plan just like went out the, no, it, to me, it looked like a team that kind of was missing the pieces that they need if they're, because I think the most exciting thing about the sun this season is how they've added this three point shooting. It's no longer this boring drawn out offense. Um, so I guess my, you've already said you haven't changed your pick for the series. So remind the folks who you have winning game three and who you have winning the series. So for the series, I think I picked New York. Pretty sure. <laughs> I think you did in five. I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> I, yeah, in five makes sense to me now. Um, but I think for last night, I had actually picked Connecticut to win because I just felt so like I, I lost all of the confidence that I had in the team um, from game one. But they did a really good job of responding. So I still, I'm still sticking with, with, them winning in five. Um, I think that New York is probably going to win game three, but I could definitely see Connecticut putting up that last fight in, in four um, and then headed back to New York. And I think they close it out on the home floor. I, yeah, I think Connecticut either needs to sweep at home or you're going to have a lot of trouble. Is there any, specific key like obviously you could either of us could talk for hours about a key factor in this give me just a one line a one player whatever like most important it can be either team deciding factor for who wins this it's a lot of pressure i know new york just has to go back to their roots in terms of play style and just go from there i would say um no specific player, but their play style of very unselfish basketball, very fast paced basketball. Um, that is going to win them this series against Connecticut because their half court defense is it's too good. It's too good. You can't just be walking it up the floor. So getting those transition buckets, keeping up the speed and playing unselfishly, that'll close it out. Period. Hey, listeners. Let me tell you about the standard in sports apparel caps, New Era. Not only do they scream style, but they also show off your love for your favorite team. These caps are top-notch, made with high-quality materials since the 1920s. That's over 100 years, perfecting your hat-wearing experience. We all have a memory of our favorite athlete or icon rocking a New Era cap, and now they got the WNBA covered as well. With New Era caps, you'll be the envy of every fan out there. Shop the official headwear of the WNBA and get 15% off when you go to neweracap.com forward slash winsider23 and use the code winsider23 at checkout. That's 15% off your order using the promo code winsider23. And we're back. 
Okay. Second series of the semifinals. Not as exciting, maybe. We got the Aces leading to zero. Um, definitely no biases with your name and the team at all. Um, but whatever, you know. Game one, Aces just handedly 97 83, poised, ready for the moment. Wings look flustered by the shine. Uh, and even though at times it was close, it never really felt like it. Like there was periods where it, it, they closed it to a 10 point game or whatever, but it, it just always felt like it was a 15 point game. Um, and I think so far, at least the mentality or the the phrase that I would use for this series, not just game one was the aces stay cool and the wings got frustrated. Um, in game one, Dallas had eight players scoring in double digits. Satu leading with 16. Sorry, that just isn't enough. Arike, 12, just isn't enough. Asia goes off. So does Kelsey Plum. Maybe they missed some shots early, but the whole thing was they stayed true to the game plan. Hit them later when you get the opportunity. You know, as uh, my favorite new phrase from Nafisa Collier, the law of averages, um, aces, we're going to start hitting shots. And then game two comes around. And like... If I'm going into game two, I'm thinking to myself as Vegas, there's no way Dallas is going to play that same game. They're going to adjust. Well, you come into it, Aces pull off an impressive victory, in my opinion, 91-84. It was the Wings Wings game to win. Like, comparable stats from three. They forced more turnovers, 21 offensive boards. But the issue was they got little to no points off those turnovers. They got little to no points off those offensive boards and second chance points. For me, they shit the bed. I'm sorry. Like, I understand. I think, especially when you, and I talked about this on the playback last night, when when you're the lower seeded team, you kind of, you go into it where teams are supposed to win their home games in the playoffs, right? And so if you can just steal one, just steal one, you'll be set because then you go home and blah, blah, blah. They couldn't do it. The crowd got behind the aces. Um, I just and Kelsey Plum's second half, what she had one point in the first half and then drops like 20 in the second, just wild. Asia, first player to score 30 in three straight games. Um, talk to me, whoa, aces, wings, what's going in your mind, Ace? This is kind of like how I anticipated it to go, just because I like you already mentioned, like they can absolutely win the battle of the boards. They could win the battle of turnovers. Dallas has a pretty respectable defense. It's the offense that's always worried me with them. And that offense being as shaky as it was entering the postseason, facing off with the aces who were very easily have been able to sort of like respond to the length that Dallas has respond to uh, the looks that they've been giving them. Like it just like, it's sad because I kind of did want more of like a fight from Dallas, but it just doesn't seem like it's there when you are being basically demoralized by Vegas. Um, They are very obviously the team that just won the finals last year. They're very obviously the team that is trying to go back this year. Whereas Dallas is obviously the team that had okay expectations heading into the season, exceeded those and is maybe just plateauing at this point. Um, and it is what it is. Like that's no knock on Dallas. Like they did an amazing job this year. They have incredible things to look forward to next season. I feel like with Satu, with Natasha Howard, um, I I assume with Arike, unless something happens, I don't remember if she's a free agent or not, but they they, they locked her up. Yeah. She's locked up. So (laughs) it's, I think that it'll be interesting to see how game three goes. Um, I could still see them stealing one, which is a messed up thing to say. Like, not that they're stealing like a game on their own home court, but it will feel like they're kind of stealing one from Vegas. Um, I could still see them winning game three um, just based on how they played yesterday. Um, Obviously improved and they only lost by, you know, seven points. So it's not, it's not terrible. Um, But like you said, like it just felt like they had it within reach and they just let it go. They let it get out of their grasp. The thing that I'm also looking at is, and I said this at a certain point, you know, free throws become a really, really important aspect of playoff games. 
Dallas missed some really important free throws late in the game. Satu two from five, two for five from the free throw line. McCowan four for six. Um, Arike not getting to the line. Odyssey Sims not able to get to the line. Uh, Kalani Brown not getting to the line. Dangerfield, Veronica Burt. Like, for, first of all, we, we could go into a whole thing about like the difference in who played in minutes for Dallas in game two. Like, for me, what I saw was Vegas made adjustments, right? Chelsea Gray had a off night the game before. She steps back up, has a wildly amazing game. She was shooting like 10 for 15 and three for three from three ends of 10 for 17 and three for four, but eight, eight assists, five rebounds, almost gets that triple double uh, with 23 points. Just even, even scoring. For me, I look at Dallas because maybe that's where my focus has been for a little bit more of the season, but also like the aces are doing what we expect the aces to do, right? Like, they're playing high octane offense. They're hitting big shots. They are saying cool, calm, and collective. Like you said, they look like they are the defending champs, like they're coming off of a championship season. There were so many points in these two games. And I did see growth between game one and game two in Dallas, where game one, lots of Arike frustrated, chucking up stupid shots, and then being upset after things. A lot of the same thing with Tierra McCowan. I understand it. I get it. McCowan's getting to the is getting smacked around in the paint and gets to the free throw line for six shots. That's not enough if we're calling real fouls, blah, blah, blah. It's playoff basketball. Suck it up. It, like, I'm sorry. You're not going to get all the calls you're going to get in the regular season. You're also going up against a defensive player of the year and a two-time MVP in Asia Wilson, which means you're not going to get those calls. And I did see growth in the sense of less standing around pouting more running back, getting back. And I would say that, the, again, we talked about the offensive board, second chance points, getting points off, turnovers not happening, and that just being a huge, huge issue. I mean, 88 total field goals for Dallas, 65 for Vegas. Efficient scoring. What we saw, and I, I want to give a shout out to Jasmine. I saw that she had tweeted something out this morning. She rewatched the second half of the game. And was talking about, you know, yes, they looked so much better, but there it was still very clear that they haven't been here before. The rushed offensive sets, um, some just extra passes because and it, it's almost like the opposite of hero ball. I don't know if there's like a term for this where you're just like making too Point many ball. passes. <laughs> <laughs> um, team ball, whatever. Um, yeah. But it just a, a frustrating. If I'm LT, I got to be frustrated. I could see them stealing one. Um, I I don't know. I, I think it's the playoffs. So you can kind of like convince yourself any narrative is accurate. Any narrative is true. Um, but I, I just look at that game and maybe I'm different than you, but I just look at that game and I'm like, every, everything went right. Like there's a difference of Vegas wasn't missing anything. You know, Vegas isn't turning the ball over. They're hitting all their shots. They're getting all the rebound. Like, you, Dallas had the opportunities. You score four more, four to eight more points. That's two to four more baskets off of turnovers. You get a couple of those offensive rebounds as putbacks. I think we're talking about a very different game. But again, you aren't able to capitalize on the opportunities. And that just really, really hurt the team. So for you, I guess... What does Dallas need to do to to get a, a win? Because I'll, I'll say this: Yes, I put money down on Dallas to win. I think realistically, I like I was very open on if I'm, I'm I understand why the odds are ten dollars for a thousand dollar payout. Like I'm not an idiot, um, but I kind of I'm 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 curious. Like, is there anything Dallas can do at this point, or uh. is it just? It, I might just be, it is what it is. Like, I think that they did exactly what they needed to do in game two, which was get those turnovers up, get those um, second chance opportunities available to them because that's where they find most of their offense. Unfortunately, I just don't see Vegas allowing them to capitalize because they're just a team that doesn't allow room for mistakes on either end of the floor. And that's what makes them so elite at what they do 
and it makes them the scariest team to play in the WNBA. I felt going into the series like Dallas could challenge them. Not the most. I still think New York could probably challenge them the most in any series, but I felt like Dallas had a really good shot at it just because of their ability to really compete with them on the glass, especially. But if they're not able to capitalize on that and actually get points, like you said, it's sort of a lost cause. Like, you know, you could have players like Natasha Howard and Satu, you know, going off and being able to contribute heavily towards grabbing those boards, doing averaging double doubles every game of the series, but it's not going to impact much when you aren't able to really capitalize on your defense, being able to get stops or turnovers on Vegas. Um, I guess three point shooting could also be better um, for Dallas, but that's another area where it really does rely on the guards being more efficient with their scoring. And that starts with Arike. And unfortunately, I also just don't see Arike going into that mode <laughs> at this point in time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think I'm leaning towards Vegas, just sweeping, but I wouldn't be shocked if Dallas is able to steal game three. I think that, you know, going into it, I totally went on a tangent and forgot where I was getting to. But going into the series, while I might have, as I said, I might have put money down on Dallas like months ago. I think for me, the true accomplishment of a successful like growth season for Dallas is winning one game in this series. It's you don't like. And this is me talking from as a person who's like Atlanta should be happy they made the playoffs. That's the growth they need. Certain teams shouldn't have made the like. I'm trying to think of it from a holistic step away view. This as like a grand scheme growth thing. For me, it's Dallas needs to find a way, even if you're not winning this series, to step in, get one victory here. Um, and yeah, I mean, Arike struggled. Honestly, what I'm looking at, I'm very, very curious what LT learned later in this game minutes wise because Manny Segris with 7 minutes I know everyone's going to hate on me for this with a plus 2 there's only two players on the team that had a positive plus minus right so like Maddie and Veronica Burton two players Maddie can score at times but Veronica Burton defensive specialist um and I think for me I would have tried to get Burton in a little bit more than just 8 minutes try to get Dangerfield in a little bit more to push pace to try a few different things out. And also the advantage of putting Burton in is it opens up shots for your other players. And Satu Savali needs to get going offensively. She needs to score more than a combined, what, like 29 points in two games. You need to be putting up points like that. If you want to be in the MVP discussion, if you want to move on to the finals, if you want to compete against a team that insert joke about how many MVP candidates they had, on the aces uh because chelsea yeah. Gray got a third place vote and that's funny i mean that's cool <laughs> yes <laughs> um all right so <laughs> you've broken it down um let's just talk about it real quick just no background no nothing you have new york winning in five you have vegas winning in three let's say maybe four how you don't even have to pick a winner how many games do you think, if your assumptions go, if your predictions go, how many games is this finals going to? Uh, if the version of the Liberty that played in game two, like the second half of game two, just continues to be the version that they play with for the rest of the postseason and the Aces stay where they're at, I think it'll go all the way. Um, I know that the Liberty were able to get like the best of Vegas towards the end of the regular season, but that's regular season basketball. It seems like the aces are like, have, have gone into postseason mode and into finals mode, New York still working their way there. And even players on the team, they will constantly be like, we're not even like at our peak. We haven't even hit that point. If they hit that peak, um, consistently and they're able to even win the series on the road against Connecticut, yeah, I would say it's going to go for all the games. Well, I would love that. I, 
people yeah. can say I have my pre- my preferences. My preference is every series goes full out, get as much basketball as possible, pay these players as much as possible. Let me see some more of those Deloitte ads. Uh, I appreciate you for taking the time in the middle of the day uh, yeah. to chat with me basketball. Real quick, uh, I know there isn't an award for it, but I don't care about finals MVP. We're not there yet. If you could pick one player for playoff MVP so far, who are you going with? Oh, Asia. Yeah. 100% Asia. Um, she's been absurd. <laughs> I don't think I've, I've run out of adjectives and I think everybody else has to, uh, to describe her. Um, but Asia for, for sure. So far. Boom. Cut it yeah. over. Appreciate you. Thank you. Absolutely.